All right, another um, interesting thing that I wanted to sweep uh, with the new uh, generator is audio transformers. So what are audio transformers? Why, why would you want to use those? Um, so we talked about common mode noise and one way of getting rid of common mode noise is to use um, transformers. So how would that work? So here is a uh, <clears throat> diagram of a, a dynamic microphone. A dynamic microphone looks just like a speaker. Uh, when you talk into it, uh, the voice coil moves or a magnet moves. Anyway, one moves with respect to the other and you generate a voltage uh, through these windings. And a lot of times that's a very small voltage and you need to amplify that. So one way to do that is to run it through a transformer uh, that has um, a few windings on this side and lots of windings on this side. So it amplifies the voltage and then it goes to an XLR connector. So you have plus and minus and ground. And so this is the microphone, that part there. So if you opened up uh, some dynamic microphone like a Shure uh, SM58, probably the most ubiquitous uh, dynamic microphones around, this is what you'd find inside. You'd find uh, the microphone cartridge, which is just a moving, moving magnet coil. And then you would find uh, in the base of the microphone a little transformer and wires. And there's no active components at all in a dynamic microphone, at least the, the SM58. So there's, there's nothing in here. It doesn't require phantom power. It doesn't require anything. You just need to monitor this voltage and uh, measure it. So you could connect this to uh, like the audio buddy that I have. Uh, there'd be a differential voltage across those windings and you'd be able to do that. Back in the old days and even some of the new um, uh, generation preamplifiers, um, instead of using a differential amplifier, they used a, a transformer on the input. So the voltage here gets changed into a voltage here, gets changed into a voltage here, and the, uh, this transformer acts as the common mode noise rejection. It also acts as a differential pair to uh, an, a, 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 a balanced pair to an unbalanced pair. Um, and so the, the amplifier would just be one end of the transformer tied to ground and then the electrical signal go off to the rest of the circuit. And if you think about it, uh, if there's any common mode noise uh, between these two wires, it won't make it through that transformer. And so, um, so these work really great and people still swear by them. Um, one of the reasons they swear by them is kind of along the lines of people swear about tube amplifiers or they swear about tube uh, this or that. And they say it's warmer sounding and stuff. Well, they're talking about distortion. They're talking about adding a certain a uh, series of harmonics that allow the, the signal to look to, to sound different. Or sometimes you plug into something and it cuts off the low frequency and it says, oh, that's great, it doesn't sound boomy. Or they cut off the high frequencies and say, oh, that sounds really smooth because they get rid of all those sharp uh, harmonics or sharp sounds that cause like S's and P's and things like that. You can roll those off. And they call that being colored. They call it um, coloring the audio. And so uh, a, tr a uh, um, an op amp can color the audio, like we saw in the M Audio uh, um, Buddy. Um, the two op amps sounded different. The one, the op amp that was in there, sounded different than the INA uh, two seventeen, um, and these will sound different because the transformer will add some type of change to the sound. It will color the sound. And so I was interested in uh, these transformers. Um, they tend to be quite expensive because they're only in kind of vintage gear or a retro gear or they're not, not many of them are sold. They're not all that popular. Uh, or they would be popular if they were cheap, but it's expensive to wind transformers, I guess. But anyway, um, so uh, I'm kind of interested in this one here. So you need a small little transformer to go in the microphone. And um, you can buy those. Um, and I'll see if I can find some, but I don't have any. Um, this type of circuit was also used in the telephone industry. So uh, it's one way to isolate yourself 
um, electrically as well. There's no electrical connection. So if there's high voltage over here, you, you won't see that over here. So telephone circuits, a lot of times they have like an 80 volt ringer signal and you, want, you don't want 80 volts coming into here, it'll blow up your transistor. So they used uh, transformers to isolate those high voltage and noise and stuff. And they're, they're quite common in modems. Um, and they're usually a one-to-one -one transformer and there are uh, 300 ohms on both sides or 600 ohms on both sides, something like that. Um, and so I found one the other day, I was ripping apart an old piece of test equipment and I found one of those transformers, it's right down here. I don't want to move it because I'm making a measurement, but um, this one is 113 ohms on this side and 127 ohms on this side. So it's, it's basically almost a one-to-one -one transformer. Uh, maybe a 10% gain, maybe? Um, but I think it's made to be a one-to-one -one transformer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna inject a signal on this side and we're gonna measure this side. And so we're gonna sweep it as we did before. We're gonna sweep it between one hertz and one megahertz. And I found that um, the last time I did this measurement, I did a 12 second sweep. Um, it seems like a 1.2 second sweep is uh, just as good. Now, why am I using 12 and 1.2 and 0.12? It's because um, my oscilloscope has 12 uh, grid marks across the uh, x-axis. And so uh, if, I, if I put uh, uh, a, a factor of 12, then it'll match up there. And then I have uh, every other um, mark on the oscilloscope would be a, a six, right? There'd be six that fit across there. And that's why I chose one, one to a, a megahertz, because the first would be 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. And that would be my six, right? So did I do that right? 10, 100, yeah. Um, and so those are the spacings on the, on the screen up there. So let's take a look at what happens when you sweep this thing. I'm getting that. Uh, there we go. I'll try to block it with this, with this thing here and try to figure out where it is. Anyway, you can see it. Um, so we see that this um, transformer doesn't allow low frequencies. So uh, certainly it's zero. Uh, there's no output at 10 hertz. There's, no, there's about half the output at 100 hertz. And then it's working just fine at, at uh, a kilohertz, which is the center of the screen. So um, I would say this thing rolls off probably around mm, 800 hertz, something like that. Uh, 500, 800 hertz. And then it, it's nice and flat through the audio spectrum. Uh, 10, let's see, 1 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. It's usable up to 100 kilohertz. It's, it's on its way up. And why does it go up? Why is it getting bigger and bigger? Well, there's a resonance frequency. Uh, if I turn this down, you can see that, that uh, up, up here we have this, this resonant frequency at some high, uh, some high value. So it's somewhere between 100 kilohertz and a megahertz. That thing is resonating. And it's about halfway in between. It's a logarithmic scale. So I'm going to say maybe two or 300 uh, kilohertz. That thing resonates. Um, so if we come back um, to the audio generator, uh, I'm going to, um, oops, I don't have you on screen here. I'm going to turn off sweep. Oops, I just hit noise. I don't want noise. I want it AM or regular. I want to turn off sweep. Okay, so we have one volt peak to peak. We'll set this frequency. Let's set it to, uh, let's start at 100 uh, kilohertz. So we have it set at 100 kilohertz. So let's take a look at the, uh, Take a look at the output. Sorry about the glare again. And I'm going to start stepping it up. Uh, so 150 kilohertz, it's gone up a little bit. 180 kilohertz. So I'm just inputting a straight uh, 
uh, straight signal. 200 kilohertz. Oh, it's starting to go up. 100, 260 kilohertz. It's going up, going up, going up. We're at 290 kilohertz. Uh, it's up still at 300 kilohertz. Oh, and it just went back down. So here's 290, 300, 310. So that, that peak is happening right around um, right around 300 kilohertz. Uh, it's still a good sine wave, but uh, it's definitely resonating at, uh, at 300 kilohertz. So the output um, amplifier in the arbitrary waveform generator is, is uh, oscillating against this, this inductance and it's starting to uh, starting to resonate there. So that's why you get it. So anyway, let's go back down here and I'll show you that little uh, show you that little transformer. Uh, so this is a uh, midcom uh, six seven one dash eight thousand and one made in the year ninety two. Um, and yeah, you'll see a lot of these in the old modems where you actually plug them into uh, a wall, <laughs> a wall telephone that has wires. Most telephones these days don't have wires, but uh, that's what this one was made for. I was thinking that maybe I could uh, try this out in a uh, uh, microphone circuit, but uh, the low end, the high end, would be, high end would be just fine on this thing. The low end though is uh, cutting out quite, uh, quite drastically.